Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya. Welcome to our StreamYard podcast. Now I do have a special guest here with me, a very powerful and well-known man. I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, <laughs> hey, Shalom, that's Hebrew for peace. I'm Bishop Nathaniel. I am the lead bishop of Israel United in Christ. Israel United in Christ is the greatest Israelite organization on the planet Earth. We are growing exponentially. We're go this truth that we are teaching and preaching is going to cover the Earth worldwide. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that introduction. Now, for those who are hearing about you for the first time, could you just tell them what um, Israel United in Christ? Sorry, Hebrews. Israel, is it? Please no, you had it right me. the first time. Israel United. Israel United in Christ. Yes, right. please tell us how it started and how you came about. Okay, well, the understanding that Black people, our people that came from Africa and that are currently in Africa, we are part of the 12 tribes of Israel written of in the Bible. A lot of people don't realize that when they read about Moses and the Israelites, that was on the continent of Africa. For some reason, well, I know the reason why, but our people think Moses and the Israelites, that history was in Europe somewhere. No, it was in Africa. Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Moses was black. Pharaoh was black. The Egyptians were black. The Israelites were black. The difference between the two, uh, like when you read Exodus 11 and seven, it says there's a difference between the Egyptians and the children of Israel was that the Egyptians were pure Nilotic and the Israelites were Shemitic um, or what they would call today. They spoke what they would say, one of the Bantu languages. OK, after that, what happened? OK, so this is the history that I've been sharing with our people. The prophets were all black. Um, Peter, James, John, Jesus Christ black men mary black woman they were all black people and that's what um has been hidden in the earth that's been hidden so from the time of the 1800s you had people like in america you had gabriel prosser who started to teach our people that we were the children of israel you also had nat turner in 1831 we called him the prophet you had um, William Saunders Crowdy in 1896, and then 1915, you had F.S. Cherry. Uh, you had in 1920, Wentworth A. Matthew. And then you had um, 1930, you had Arnold Josiah Ford, who set up a small congregation in Ethiopia, okay, during the time of Haley Selassie. Um, in the 60s, uh, actually 1950 to the 60s, you had uh, Abba Bivens or Abba Bivens. That's from where we stem from. And from there you had Moshe Ben Karim, Yaquab Sharad, uh, Arya uh, Ben Yehuda. And that's where Israel United in Christ stemmed from. Uh, House of David, then Israel United in Christ after that. And from there, I, I founded Israel United in Christ in the year 2000 three from 2003 we began to grow and we begin to we set up a school in schools in ghana uganda liberia sierra leone and there's one more off the top of my head i forgot where it is but it's in africa we have five schools in africa and we're growing rapidly uh we've read we've met many much opposition from the World Council of Churches. Many of you may have never heard of the World Council of Churches. The World Council of Churches is a European uh, council of leaders that dictate how the Bible is to be taught, read, and preached. They're the ones that say Jesus Christ is Caucasian. For example, I'm giving you an example. And he pushed that image throughout Uganda, Ghana, Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. That was the other place we have a school at. I'm sorry. I've been forgetting. I'm, I'm up in age. But um, the World Council of Churches, Churches is the right arm of the Roman Catholic Church. Many of you 
don't realize that it was the Roman Catholic Church under Pope Nicholas V that orchestrated the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to say it again. Pope Nicholas V is the Pope that initiated a papal bull that orchestrated Spain and Portugal to begin the transatlantic slave trade, which started in 1441. Think about it. From 1441, we were emancipated in 1865. That's approximately 424 years of chattel slavery. I want y'all to think about that. The churches don't talk about it. They've been instructed by the World Council of Churches, never talk about it. So they don't talk about that. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you that in the Holy Bible. And now I need y'all to write this stuff down, okay? Deuteronomy 28. Watch what God told Moses to tell us. This was, again, on the continent of Africa. This is what he said. But it shall come to pass... If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So in Africa, we were warned by the prophet Moses, if you break God's commandments, people often ask me, what is the true religion? What did we just read? If you break God's commandments all these curses will come upon you so he never get god never gave us a religion of catholicism baptist episcopalian mormon seventh day adventist protestant that's made up by the white man our former colonizers slave masters they made all that up the bible says if you break god's commandments these curses will come upon you what curses what are you talking about i'm gonna read some curses and you tell me if this happened to our black people or the white man in israel verse 32 thy sons and thy daughters you want to say something no 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 i just want to react to what you're saying so okay you keep going. So i'm going to read some curses that would happen to the israelites verse 32 Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fear with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in your hand. So let's explain that. The pro one of the prophecies of, of being cursed would be that our sons and daughters would be given to another people. We were given to Spain, Portugal, the Dutch, Britain, and America. And it said we would have no might in our hands, no military might to get our sons and daughters back, no political might to get our sons and daughters back, and no economic might to get our sons and daughters back. So that's one curse. I'm going to read another curse. So now the question is, did this happen to us black people or the white man in Israel today? That's the question. Verse 48 is another curse. Therefore shall you serve your enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, meaning we would serve our enemies for food, water, clothing. Want of all things includes education. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Yokes of iron, chattel slavery on our necks. Did that happen to us black people or to the white man in Israel? Everybody got to think about this because you've not been taught this in your churches. Now, I'm going to read another curse. Watch this. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. What does that mean, a proverb and a byword? Proverbs and bywords are names outside of what God calls us. So, in the Bible, God calls us the 12 tribes of Israel. When we went into slavery and were colonized, we were renamed. The name, for example, African-American, that's a proverb and a byword. 
nigger is a proverb and a byword. Um, Gadean, proverb and byword. Nigeria, who gave the name Nigeria to that area? A white woman made that name up and said, call them Nigerians. All the, Liberia, who gave that name? White people. These are labels that they put on us. So now here I am, African-American. So that curse has been fulfilled on us. Now watch this, here's, here's a great one. Verse 68, listen good. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now you gotta look up that word Egypt. It's a Greek word that means captive or bondage, slavery. That's what Egypt means, it's a Greek word. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Who went into bondage again with ships? Did the white man in Israel go into slavery on ships? Or did our people taken from Uganda, taken from Nigeria, taken from Zanzibar, taken from Sierra Leone, taken from uh, 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 um, the Congo, Guinea? Who took us on ships? Let's read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off the ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall save you. The word buy is a Quaker word that means save you. Our people were taken from, for example, Burkina Faso. Okay, and you had a leader named Thomas Sankara who tried to redeem the people there. What happened? They assassinated him. Our people were taken from the Congo. You had a great black leader named Patrice Lumumba that rose up. They assassinated him. You had, we, our people were taken from Ghana. You had a great black leader named Kwame, Kwame Nkuru. Y'all know I can't pronounce some of these names. Kwame Nkuruso. How do you Nkuruma. say his name? Kwame Nkuruma. Thank you. What yeah. she said, we were taken from there. And what happened to him? He was exiled from his homeland to Liberia and his cook was murdered, assassinated. He lived in fear the rest of his life. He wrote several books, but he lived in fear and died a very suspicious death. Okay. So many, we uh, Nelson Mandela was a mighty, listen good to what I'm about to say now. Listen good. Nelson Mandela was a mighty revolutionary along with his wife, Winnie. When he got arrested, they imprisoned him for about 27 years or more. 27, they broke him. When he came out, he was no longer a revolutionary. His spirit was crushed and they allowed him to be the president of South Africa. Nobody saw nothing wrong with that. And what was his, one of the first things they made him do? Divorce his wife and crush the rebellion. That's what they made him do. Okay, so any black leader that rises up, what does the Western powers do? They crush them. They assassinate them. They manipulate them. So what, are, what have I been doing? Showing you what would happen to the 12 tribes of Israel. They would be oppressed. They would be colonized. They would be renamed. They would go into slavery on ships. Okay, so ask yourself, the curses that I read, did it happen to our black people? or to the white man in Israel, who was set up there in 1948. These white people were put in the land of Israel in 1948. They are not the Israelites of the Holy Bible. They are not. Now I know that might shock you, but it's biblical. And there has been a campaign, a media blackout on the Israelites. There are organizations that are set up they, co they create something called anti-Semitism and say, if you speak or criticize Israel, white Israel, you are an enemy of the state and the Western powers are against you. So for example, the Israelites, which I'm a part of, and I realize that we are the people of the Bible. We are the people of this book. Now you may ask yourself, how do you know the people in the Bible are black people? Okay, I just proved colonialism and slavery. Can I show color in the Bible? 
most Christians, when I've gone throughout Uganda, Ghana, Nigeria, the first thing is colors not in the Bible. That's the first thing they say. So I asked the question, if color's not in the Bible, why do you believe Jesus is white? Why do you believe that? And they'll, they'll sit there and they'll look around, they'll look at the sky and go, because when we were colonized, we were taught that, ah, when you were colonized and enslaved, you were taught Jesus is white. But did they show you Bible proof that Jesus is white? Then they all go, no. And I say, okay, let me help you. All right, now I'm gonna show you Jesus is black in the Bible. Let's go to Revelation chapter one. I'm gonna start at verse one and then I'm gonna jump to verse 14 to the point. Verse one reads, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Let's jump over to verse 14, where John looks at Jesus and writes a description down, his description down. His head and his hairs were white like wool, meaning the hair on his head was white and the texture was wool. Wool hair is not straight hair. Wool hair is Afro hair. You understand that? Wool hair is Afro hair. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning the whites of his eyes were red with wine. That's what it means. Because when you read Genesis 49, verse 12, Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, it says, Jesus Christ drank wine moderately. So the whites of his eyes were red. Okay, now watch his color. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass is brown. As if they burn in a furnace. If you take anything and burn it in a furnace, ask yourself the question, what color does it get? If you burn white rice in a furnace, what color does it get? Does it turn black or white? Black. So it's telling you Christ had Afro hair, and his skin like it burned in a furnace. He was black. Is there any more? Is there any more? Watch. Come, come, come. Let me help you. Let me go to the, the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 21. Watch this. The description of Paul, Acts 21 verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee, who said, can you speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made an uproar? So the captain of the guard thought Paul was Egyptian. Now we all know the ancient Egyptians were black, not those Arabs you see today. Those are not the ancient Egyptians. Let me say it again. The Arabs in Egypt today are not when did they get there 641 a.d six 641 years after christ those arabs conquered the land of egypt so we're in the year what year is this with paul this is about the year 3 a.d 3 about the year 3 somewhere around there let's read it again verse 38 this is what the captain says to paul art not thou that egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. So what does that prove? The ancient Jews look just like the ancient Egyptians. Black, black, black. But your churches have been taught, never teach this to them. Because why? They might unite and rise up against the western powers they said god forbid that never allow that but is there more color in the bible watch this y'all heard of the prophet job right everybody heard of the prophet job job 30 verse 30 watch what he says my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat the prophet job says my skin is black my skin 
I, I remember a minister in Uganda came to me and said, brother, that does not mean his skin. It means his, his feeling, his emotions. I said, wait a minute, can you read English? I can read. I'm gonna read it again. My skin is black upon me. I said, pastor, does it say my emotion or does the word say the skin, my skin? He goes, yes, it does say skin. I said, then stop lying to the people. Stop lying to the people throughout Uganda. Stop lying to the people throughout Africa. Stop lying to the people of the world. Stand up for the truth that the Bible says. He walked away. He has something to think about. Is there more? Jeremiah, y'all heard of the prophet Jeremiah? Chapter eight, verse 21. He says, for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. And what? I am black. Who says this? The prophet Jeremiah. So what have we proved? Jesus is described as black with Afro hair in the Bible. The apostle Paul looked like the ancient Egyptians, black. The prophet Job said, my skin is black. Jeremiah says, I am black. Is there more? Solomon, Solomon. See, this is why there's a media blackout on the Israelites. Don't let them on the airwaves. They're gonna undo the centuries of lies the World Council of Churches and the Catholic Church have, have done. We're, underdo we're undoing the lies. Where am I going? Song of Solomon. Watch this. Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse one, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon. So who wrote this? King Solomon. Verse five, I am black, but comely, meaning good looking, O you daughters of Jerusalem. So what does Solomon say? I am black. Solomon was one of the great grandparents of Jesus Christ. So if the king of Israel was black, Jesus Christ was black, one of his descendants. That's not taught in no church on earth except amongst the Israelites. So what is the difference between Christianity and the Israelites? Huh? The difference is white supremacy. We do not teach white supremacy. We teach the Bible. All your churches for centuries, from the time of slavery, colonization, you've been taught lie after lie after lie. And you've got images of a white Jesus with straight hair. And I'll ask your ministers, can you prove to me in the Bible, Jesus had straight hair or yellow hair? They can't do it. Can you prove to me Jesus Christ had pink skin like Caucasians? They can't do it. Be Why? Because they've taught nothing but lies. Your religious institutions have been teaching lies from day one. Why? That helps America and Britain give you foreign aid. You heard of foreign aid? Well, you're giving, you're given by the powers that be foreign aid millions of dollars which I'm gonna be nice, I'm gonna be nice, which is to be used. I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. I'm trying to be nice about this. <clears throat> Foreign aid, I'm gonna give you the history. Thomas Sankara, back in the 80s, 1982, 83, around there. He didn't want foreign aid. He said, Africa in Burkina Faso does not need foreign aid because foreign aid dictates how you live, what you teach in your country, so we don't need it. They assassinated Thomas Sankara. They hired one of his friends to kill him. They gave his friend thousands of dollars to kill him. Why am I bringing that up? Whoever pays you, <laughs> whoever pays you dictates what you teach, how your culture is. So now I say that, I said that nicely to say this. Foreign aid is given to many of the countries in Africa. When I've gone throughout Africa and established schools, I notice you all have the same 
white supremacist school system. You all have the same white supremacist church system. What do you want to say, Juan, uh, Juanita? <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I was agreeing with you because that is true. Um, because we're colonized by the British. Um, yes most of the things that they taught us or left behind are what we still do even our education system um our parliaments and so many things so yes i, I do agree with you yes yes and yeah. the bible warns us about taking money from people who hate us when you read ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7 i'm gonna read it it says surely oppression makes a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart what does it mean a gift a gift is money money destroys the heart your heart is your mind because let's say you want to say hey the white man has been wicked to black people for centuries they colonized us they enslaved us we have to get rid of their foreign aid we have to get rid of uh, uh this educational system their church system and they say hey i'll give you five million dollars ten million and you go, 10 million, really? You give me $10 million? If I do what? You have to accept what we teach. You have to school, accept our school system and our church system and allow us to come in and take your natural resources, $10 million. Now on paper, it'll say $10 million is to be for the creation of a strong police force for a buildings to be set up buildings pavement it'll say it'll dictate different things like that but on the back end they'll say you can use this money for you and your family to get rich and that's what happens that's what happens because when you look at foreign aid it'll dictate what the money is technically supposed to be used for the betterment of the country but on the back end, what happens? The powers of the country, I'm trying to be nice, are allowed to use that money for private or personal gain. I'm trying to be very nice and political so nobody gets in trouble, but I know what goes on. I know what goes on. Um, I've seen it worldwide. Many of the black institutions in America are given grants by America. And they are our first opponents. When we try to bring out the truth of the Bible, the black groups are the first to come against. I'll give you another example. In Ghana, I sent some brothers to Ghana. It was this year. And guess what the Protestant church did when we came to give out flyers and show them the truth of the Bible? They attacked the brothers. The police had to get involved. Why did they attack the brothers? Because the brothers were teaching and showing the congregation, Jesus is black. We must keep the commandments if we want salvation. All churches are taught lies and are preaching lies. The brothers were attacked and beaten for that. Not just Ghana. It happened in Sierra Leone. The brothers were arrested. Uh, it happened uh, oh, here in America. <laughs> There are institutions like the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center, Canary Mission, CAA, um, I forgot what that stands for, CAA, I forgot what it stands for. But uh, these groups along with the NAACP are against the true teaching of the Holy Bible. If you don't teach white supremacy, that Jesus is white, God is white, the Israelites are white. You are an enemy of the state. This is why Christ said, what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Every man, every woman listening right now to me, you have to make a decision. Will you believe the Bible or will you believe white supremacy? Because the black Messiah is coming back to establish new Jerusalem on earth. You have to make your decision. Will you be his enemy or will you be his servant? I'm his servant. Brothers and sisters that listen to me, we are his servants. We acknowledge. Now watch, watch this. Watch this. People ask me, how do you be saved? How do we become saved? Okay. 
I'm going to give you the Bible, what Jesus Christ said. Matthew 19, verse 16 and 17. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's the question. What do we have to do to get eternal life? Salvation. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What did Christ say? Keep the commandments. What did he say? Keep the commandments. Now I want you to think about during the time of Moses. Why did our people get colonized and enslaved? Because we broke what? The commandments. That's why we were enslaved and colonized. Because we broke God's commandments. So now, Christ is coming back. He already told us the key. If you want eternal life, keep the commandments. The churches say, no, no, don't keep the commandments. Don't just believe in white Jesus. Say three Hail Marys, do the sign of the cross. Go to church on Sunday. Go to church on Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus. Can anybody prove Jesus Christ was born Christmas Day? December 25th? No, you can't prove it because it's a lie. Another lie you've all been taught. Come on back, Juanita. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. I know you got a lot to say. Come on. You got know, um, I, I'm learning. I tell people all the time on the podcast that I'm always learning. So this is new to me. I won't say it's my first time because I've done my research about you, but this is definitely eye-opening. It's 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 refreshing to hear something like this. So I hope that whoever is watching this is also feeling refreshed. Um, um for people who I guess want to join your um, want to join Israel United in Christ, how would they go about it? Well, first uh go to our website. Um, what they gotta do, visit the uh, page um look up visitors and there's a phone number for whatever your country is i know right now we're in five african countries uh with all throughout the united states we're in central south america as well just look it up and call us or email us and if you don't have a school in your country we can have brothers come out there to begin to set one up okay so that's how you do it but the main thing before you even join us, is to repent of your sins. Repent. Sin, do you know what sin means, sis? Do you know what sin means? Not you, obeying you know the commandments. Huh? Not obeying the commandments. Very good. Very good. You're absolutely right. That is what it means. When you go to 1 John, let me help everybody out. 1 John... Chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law, meaning breaking God's law. That's what sin is. The churches don't teach us that. We were colonized and, and enslaved because we broke God's law. We suffer today under oppression because we break God's law. So that's the first thing we got to do is repent, meaning keep the law, keep God's commandments. There are laws specific for us as a people, there are laws specific for men and there are laws specific for women. We must apply these laws. That's what Christ is looking for. That's why he said, keep the commandments. If you want eternal life, keep the commandments. And it is a world doctrine not to teach that. You become enemy of Western powers if you teach that. Think about it. The Dutch, the British, America, the Spanish, uh, the Portuguese, they helped enslave us. Even the Arabs during the uh, sub-Sahara slave trade. That's how some of us became Muslim. They enslaved us before the transatlantic slave trade. Okay. And watch this. Watch this. Now we got the African Union, right? It's set up. African Union. Yay! Yay! No. Stop. Let me tell you all about the African Union. I'm a, I'll be nice. Number one, the institution, the building was built by China. China built the building of the African Union. Does the African Union have power? 
Let's examine it. In Libya, after Gaddafi was assassinated, yes, after Gaddafi was assassinated, they began to enslave black people. In Afghanistan, they enslave black people. In Saudi Arabia, they enslave black people. What does the African Union do? Nothing. What have they done? Nothing. Tanzania began to kick our people out of Tanzania. Just recently called us a virus, a plague to society, claimed that we tried to change the demographics when Tanzania originally was a black continent country. They started to kick the black people out. It wasn't until America intervened and said, we'll, we'll hold back money from you. Then the president of Tanzania said, oh, okay, I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. They want that money. The African Union has no global power. They have power against their citizens though, but no global power, no true political power. Why? Because black people are not respected. The Israelites are not respected under white supremacy. Understand that. I hope everybody understands that. Now, you can take it or leave it. I'm going to just tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you that I love my people. I'm going to tell you the truth, whether it costs my, me my life or not. I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay. Come on back, sis. Come on back. I know I'm, I'm rude, but I'm sorry. I got to tell yeah, you the truth. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sure everyone wants to hear what you have to say. So please. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ma no, but uh, this has been enlightening, honestly. This is, I feel like you've, you've answered most of my questions that I had for you. But just to help me understand as a sister in Uganda, how does, um, how do you see, what's the future of the church? Um, and what role do you think it will play on society? Okay, now when you see the, when you say the word church, what do you mean? Oh, sorry. I don't know. Can, what am I supposed to call Israel United in Christ? Oh, could yes, you educate me? We are, we are building, rebuilding our nation. This is truly, it's not about um, what we call denominational religions. This is a nation of people that have been scattered worldwide. Like in Iran, do you realize, realize there are our people were scattered as slaves over there in Iran and Iraq? called the Afro-Iranians and Afro-Iraqis. Are you aware of that? I'm finding out right now. Okay, that's not been taught. In India, they took our people from Ghana and Guinea and sent them to India. They're called the CDs. If you Google CDs, you see people that look like you and me. They worship the East Indian gods. If you type in Afro-Iran, you'll see brothers and sisters that look like you and me that were enslaved by the Arabs. Okay, that's not been taught. So we are reuniting our people. Nobody else is on this mission except us. And I give all praises to the Most High. Now, the word church, let me show you in the Bible who the church is, okay? And when you go to the book of Acts chapter seven, Acts chapter seven and verse 37 and 38, watch what it says about the church. It says, this is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. What church was in the wilderness with Moses? The 12 tribes of Israel. There was no Catholic, there was no Baptist, no Episcopalian, no Seventh-day Adventist, no Jehovah Witness. That did not exist. The only church in the Bible was the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, what is the prophecy about what's going to happen to us? Woo! You sure you want to know what's going to happen to us? Yes. This is what's going to happen. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Like I said, when you teach the truth of God, that we are his people, that broke his commandments and went into slavery, now we're waking up. We are the enemy of Western powers. Watch what Christ says. Matthew 24. And I'm going to read this. Uh, I'll start at verse 7. And it reads, Nation shall rise against nation, 
You see Ukraine and Russia fighting, right? Yes. Do you notice that the Ukraine kicked? They would not help the black people in the Ukraine. They would not allow black people on the trains to escape the war. They said, if you want to escape the war in Ukraine, walk. Black men, black women, even black women who are pregnant and had babies. It's all on YouTube. You can see it. The Ukraine are raci racist, racist. They hate our people. Let me read it again. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. You see famines? It's here in America, there's a food shortage. Then it says, and pestilence. You know what pestilence is? Like COVID-19. I'm going to pause there. Bill Gates said, we need a vaccine against COVID-19 because Africa is going to get hit the worst. But there is a God. And God protected Africa, the continent, opposed to those of us under the western powers those of us in america got hit a lot of our people died in europe got hit a lot of our people died in africa bill gates was like why did it hit africa because there's a god protecting our people that's why so now he says and listen they created that virus these white people along with china created the virus they call COVID 19. I'm going to read on. Now, I know you, this might be shocking to some of you. They created that in the laboratory. That's not taught. That's not taught. But I'm telling you, y'all can start Googling the stuff that I'm telling you. But a lot of the websites have been blocked. Watch this. It says, and earthquakes. There's earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Okay. In diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Watch this about the church, the Israelites. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Why would they afflict us? Because we're teaching God's truth. We're restoring the 12 tribes of Israel who are throughout Africa, America, Iran, Iraq, our black people, which are scattered worldwide. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is why I said when we were in Ghana, we got attacked by the church. Uh, Uganda, we got attacked. Uh, uh, Sierra Leone, we got attacked. America, you got institutions, the World Council of Churches, the uh, Anti-Defamation League, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, uh, NAACP. They have begun attacking us for what? What? We're not violent. They're attacking us for teaching God's truth. And we are against white supremacy. Let's read it again. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise. We're seeing that now and shall deceive many. So this is what's going on. And there's a world campaign. Listen, what I'm about to say. You have the three Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Islam, in Judaism. Y'all can Google this. Abrahamic faith in uh, U United Arab Emirates. They got these three buildings set up. They're making one world religion with those three united, where all the people of the world is to be one global religion. And we, the Israelites, are against that. They have made us an enemy of the state, an enemy of the world. But that's okay. We know some of us will get put to death, will be arrested and prosecuted. But that's the prophecy of the Bible. But at the end, we will be resurrected. That's what we must have faith and believe and understand. We will be resurrected. Come on back, sis. I said some things there. Come on back. No, I do believe we will be resurrected. I do, I do, I do believe that. Um, uh, now, unfortunately, we have to come to the end of this episode, but I'm hoping that we can have you on again because yes, this is yes, interesting. Yes. And I'd love to know, I want to learn. I'm sure there's so much more that the rest of the audience would also like to hear about. I'm um, just, I, I already mentioned that they can find you on your website. Could you just say that again in case they come to yes. the end to look for your details? Visit our website at www.israelunite.org. That's israelunite.org. For your country, your state, 
and you'll, you'll see the phone number. You can call us. You can email us at Israel at IsraelUnite.org. You can email us too. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. I was just quiet this whole time because I was learning so much and I didn't want to interrupt. Okay. When you All teach. praises to the Lord. Lord's will be back on. This is yes. good. Yes. All okay. praises to the Lord. Shout out to your, um, Miss Deborah, the person on your team who yes. reached out to us. Um, all praises. Joel, to her yes. yes. She messages me and she says all praises. So all praises indeed. So thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Okay. Um, don't go off yet. Let me just. Um, so yeah, so we've come to the end of this episode. Please follow us on all our social media pages at King and the Nation. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the bell for notifications and we'll see you guys next time.